Hello everyone, and welcome back to Smith's Garage. In this episode, I'm gonna go over how I lowered my Volkswagen Beetle and what it's like to drive a lowered car. Now, lowering a Volkswagen Beetle is actually a fairly simple process, and there's two ways of doing it. One that's easier and one that's a little bit harder. So the easier way of lowering a Volkswagen Beetle is in the back, it's the simplest. There's a set of torsion bars that run from the left to the right of the car. And all you have to do is pretty much just pull off the cap. And there's a plate that goes from the torsion bar down to your wheel. And you can pull that off and change it up by a couple splines, which gives you like a couple degrees of rotation. There's a specific number, not sure what it is. And then you push it back on, put your cap on, and that lowers the back of the car. But when you do that, make sure you use a paint marker and mark the original location of the splines. And once it's moved, mark your new location. So if it's a little too much or too little, you can know how much to adjust it from there. And that's pretty much the easiest way to get the back to be lower to the ground. In the front, there isn't necessarily an easy way of doing it like I just told you how to do at the back. Now the easiest way I'd probably suggest to do it is you can buy two inch dropped spindles from something like a place like California Imports. I think they're sold in a lot of places. And all you have to do is knock the kingpin out, put in your new uh, uh, steering spindle, and then put in your new kingpin. And, and sometimes with old cars, it's worth replacing those anyways. And you'll have two inches lower in the front, which is sometimes enough especially if you're going to a more lower profile tire like I did, which also lowers the car. Now, when you're doing the new king pins, it's a little bit of a difficult process. When I was doing it, I had to submerge my entire spindle into some boiling water to get the metal to expand. And then I had to freeze the king pin itself and use a big press to press it in. It was just a painful process, but that's one way of doing it. Now, I'll tell you about the one step further you can do, which is what I've done on this car. I've combined both the steps. This step is what makes it so you can have adjustable ride height. So I'll start in the front since that's where I just was. You can buy, I don't remember what they're called. I'll put a picture of it up. And they go in the middle of your front beam. And they are, it's a bolt that goes through a aluminum block and into your torsion bar. And the hole that you have to cut on your uh, front beam has to be oblong so that block and screw can move up and down. Then there's a little uh, like U-shaped piece that goes around it with another bolt in the bottom to support it. And what that does is it makes it so if you loosen the bolt that goes through the aluminum block and you rotate it up like that, it'll bring your wheels down, in turn, which in turn raises the vehicle. And then you use the other little bolt at the bottom that screws up to the aluminum block to lock it in place. So that's how you'd raise it, and then you'd bring it down to lower it. And all it does is just change where your um, torsion bars are sitting in the middle. Because an original front beam actually has a bolt going through the middle to hold the torsion bars in the middle anyways. And all you're doing is using that same principle, but making it adjustable. And in the back, you can also buy uh, an adjustable piece. It's not for the torsion bars themselves though. This adjustable piece starts going uh, on, you know that uh, arm that goes from your torsion bars down to your wheel? Um, it replaces that whole thing. You take that off, it goes on, and there's one piece that goes from the torsion bar halfway down the arm. Then there's another piece that goes from the torsion bar all the way down the arm. And then between those two pieces, there'll be a screw that sticks up and it'll push against the panel that's actually on the torsion bar on the splines. And if you tighten it so the screw comes up, it'll raise your suspension. And then if you loosen it so it comes down, it'll lower your suspension. And that's the setup that I have to be able to run adjustable suspension front and back and to be able to lower my car to where it is because you, once you put those in, you can't just lower them as far as they'll go. You also have to adjust the splines in the back. And the reason why I would lean towards the adjustable route is because no matter what you do, 
your suspension, you might even want to change it once in a while because um, I'll move on to the second part of this video about what it's like to drive a lowered car like this. And when you're first setting up your suspension, you're going to lower your car down, it's going to be sitting and it won't have settled. The suspension needs to settle. And even if you roll the car back and forth, it won't fully settle. I'd recommend like driving around the block once. And that's where you'll be see your true height. And sometimes you'll set it down, you're like, yeah, that looks good. And then you'll drive it around and it'll be like way lower than what you want. When I first set this car down, it was like, it was really cool looking, don't get me wrong. The rear tires were nicely like tucked right up into the fender wells and it looked super mean and I loved it. But sure enough, um, I was looking at it and I'm like, man, this thing's pretty low to the ground. So I drove it around for a couple days and I was actually pretty good for a couple days until I went to a different gas station and when I was pulling out back onto the road, just down the little driveway that goes like through the curb, I went down and I could tell that I was about to hit exit it was too late and I felt the nose scrape the ground and I was like, shit. And then I was like, well, I either back up and scrape the nose again or I go forward and I scrape wherever on the back. And I decided to go forward because I was curious what was gonna even hit on the back. I went forward and sure enough, it scraped on the back too. So I, I got home and I evaluated the damage and on the front, I scraped the paint off on the nose, uh, like the bottom of the front apron. And in the back, I scraped my muffler and an area of my exhaust, which pissed me off because I had really nicely done some exhaust wrap um, around my exhaust after the muffler. And the reason why I did that was because I wanted to reduce as much heat going up to my engine as I possibly could. But what I uh, what happened was is I scraped there in those two spots. I raised my car a little more, drove it around, and the only other thing I ended up scraping, which scared the shit out of me, was my oil sump plate. I have a special oil sump plate with a that has a drain plug in the middle because I think it's kind of dumb that some oil sump plates are just you have to take off the entire plate to get your oil out because it'd just be such a mess. Oh wait, no wait, I think if you take one screw out it'll... Anyways, I have an oil sump plate with a drain plug in the middle and I scraped the top of the drain plug which scares me because that's a pretty important part of your engine. And um, I know the obvious easy solution is to just raise the car which some of you might think is what I should do but I happen to quite like the height that it's at. I would actually rather it be lower down, but I'd rather not have the stress of scraping some more. So yeah, anyways, that is my short and sweet video about how to lower the car and how I loaded the car and what it's like to drive a lowered car. So thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.